Well, we told you moments ago that Carlisle's Bank United is said to be planning an initial public offering. For the details, we're joined by Christina Leshy. She's the Bloomberg reporter that broke the story. This according, as we mentioned earlier, to, according to people familiar with the situation. So talk to us a little bit about Bank United. So Florida lender and uh, it, it collapsed and then you had some rescuers come in. So talk to us about the timeline a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it collapsed at the precise time that the government was sort of looking around for capital to inject into these to these banks, right? You had an environment where banks were failing at an unprecedented rate and there was all this money sitting on the sidelines ready to take advantage of that situation. And so basically Wilbur Ross, uh, Blackstone, Carlisle Group came into that situation, put money into the, the, the FDIC basically failed the bank so that it went into bankruptcy. And then these sponsors came in and bought the assets and recapitalized the bank, and now it and now it's operating. So it's only been the fascinating thing about this story is that it's only really been 15 months since the transaction happened, and the fact that they're turning their investment around and IPOing it is a big deal. Now it's still fresh, and our sources are not our sources are just telling us the information as it's you know like basically live so we don't know whether or not the sponsors are actually going to sell their stakes or whether they're going to raise capital for acquisition so we don't really know what this money is going to be used for yet uh, but i mean as you say this quick turnaround i mean it's interesting because it you have, have sort of this banking landscape right now. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be terribly positive. Right. You also have an IPO landscape that is mixed at best. So yeah. the timing of this is, you know, yeah. it's an interesting uh, time to do it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The, you have to also keep in mind one dynamic here that's different from the exact forces that you're talking about that you would think would discourage this kind of thing, is that the private equity sponsors bought this out of bankruptcy. So it's performing really, really well. Um, and n not to say that all bankrupt deals do well, because there are examples of the exact opposite happening. But in this case, the asset has performed very well in a short amount of time. And then these sponsors are also being pressured to return capital back to investors. So again, we're, we're unclear whether they're going to sell their stakes. But if they were to, it would obviously to repay investors, to, to give capital back to their investors. And, and I guess it's also early to figure out when this might be happening. Yeah, it's, it's you guys will be the first to know. <laughs> but this Excellent. is also significant because when the FDIC stepped in to assist the sale, um, they also agreed to a loss sharing agreement. So taxpayer money actually went into this deal. Um, and. This is sort of the reason why the FDIC and government regulators don't want private equity getting mixed up with bank buying, because you have taxpayer money going into an asset that is appreciating for the benefit of private investors. So that can be seen as that can seem as a little controversial in that sense. So that's why the regulators were initially against it. You know, I quickly want to just talk about another story dealing with private equity today, and that's Blackstone um, buying Dynagy for five hundred and forty million dollars. Um, what, talk to us about that deal, especially in the, in the context of other deals that we have seen this year. Yeah, that's a great question because if you look at this deal, it's actually it's a big headline number. But if you look at the actual money that Blackstone is putting in, it's actually quite small for for an, for, for a private equity deal, and that's consistent and what we've seen in terms of sponsor-backed deals. They're smaller equity checks. And this one, in fact, the sponsors didn't even have to take out new debt. So they're just rolling over the debt from the target into the new, into the, they're just keeping, basically, they're just taking on the debt liabilities with no extra debt. So this is very consistent in what we've seen with sponsor-backed transactions. Okay, thanks. A lot to talk about today. Thank on you. The, uh, thanks IPO for having me and on. private equity front. Thanks, thanks a lot, Christina Leshy with uh, Bloomberg News.